We have a fun one today in which we're going to analyze the picture here to the right. What is this? How does it work? What are the dimensions of these cavities? Can we even make a smaller one? Why are these better than some of the other tubes that are offered? What is the electron acceleration rate equal to? And what additional factor or features does it have? So now this is a standing wave accelerator tube. So typically, if we're looking at this, we are going to have the electron gun here to the left, and it is going to be putting a string of electrons within here. Those will be accelerated. And then to the right, we are going to have the target. So when you are looking at this structure, we have standing wave, we have traveling wave, but you need to be able to analyze and pick up based on a picture or a diagram, which one is which. So what you want to do is look at these side cavities. That will help you determine that, okay, you see these main cavities, then you see these side cavities. That is a standing wave accelerator structure. So that is what you want to look at to quickly determine what type of structure this is. Now, how does it work? So this gets pretty, pretty nasty, pretty ugly, and a whole lot of physics. If you like that, you're going to love this. And to be honest, it's kind of a gray area in how much detail you need to go in understanding the physics. Uh, when I studied, I erred on the option of knowing more rather than less, but you also don't want to dig yourself a hole, but you're going to have to figure out what you feel comfortable with. So first of all, it accelerates electrons that enter at around 50 keV to the to high energy so the electrons that go in here are about 50 keV and then when it shoots out obviously we're talking about linear accelerator energy type of materials and, and beams so it resonates at three gigahertz and in the s band so the electrons accelerate with the increased microwave power and that microwave power can also control the energy of the beam as well. So the electric field in the cavities flip directions every half period. So every, all these cavities in here, that's what I'm talking about, these cavities right in the middle, the electric field in those flip every half period. Now the electrons accelerate in each cavity. So it travels through the cavity during half periods as it enters it or enters the next one, it flips. So the electric field, you know, flips, accelerating it further. So as the electrons are moving down, this electrons moving this way, and the electric field keeps flipping every half period, and that's driving it faster and faster, accelerating it as it moves down the tube. So now both ends of the tube are shorted to create a standing wave. So that's where we get the standing wave accelerator structure is because both ends are shorted. And so when you look, you actually can see a standing wave inside the cavities in this structure. So like I think it was Karsmark mentioned, very good analogy in that this is like a violin where a violin is also fixed on both ends, like it is in a standing wave structure. And the string, which is going to be our beam of electrons and things, it vibrates up and down. Now we've got a four millisecond pulses. And the another thing to note, it's kind of hard to see here, honestly. I don't really see it in this diagram. But the first few cavities are closer to each other in distance. And then they start varying in distance and then eventually become equidistant. So that accommodates for the relativistic effects and time dilation. So a lot of information to dissect there, a lot of physics to understand, get to where you're comfortable, but be able to verbally explain what a standing wave structure does and feel comfortable with it. So if diving too far into the physics starts making you feel uncomfortable, don't go that far. You don't want to dig yourself a hole and you also don't want to make it appear as though you're guessing or you're kind of just making things out in thin air. You certainly don't want to do that on your exam. So now, uh, can you make a smaller one? 
uh, and so, or what are the dimensions of the cavity? Sorry. So each dimension of the cavity is about five cm. And yes, you could use a higher frequency like a nine gigahertz X band compared to the three gigahertz S band that we use. So for example, like the cyber knife, it uses this and it has a 3.3 CM cavity. So you can change the frequency and make a smaller one if you choose. So now why are these better than the traveling wave accelerator structures? So first of all, these are, I'll write them down here. So first they are shorter. So that helps obviously with spacing, not only within the linear accelerator, but the room. We also have a higher efficiency, which obviously less, less energy wasted in heat and higher efficiency always the better. Now there is a, a better, what they call shunt impedance. There's an imp there. So that means that essentially a better shunt impedance you have a better efficiency to turning the RF power to accelerating gradient. And then also this reduces the dose rate by 20%. So, you know, that's not an advantage, but something also to note that it does have a small disadvantage compared to the traveling wave. So now what is the acceler or electron acceleration? It is 10 to 25 MeV per meter. And then what additional features does it have? So this is really open-ended. This just gave me an opportunity to discuss some other things about this structure. So a solenoid run across the tube and helps focus the pencil beam and steering coils puts it in the bending magnet in the right location. Every other cavity has a electric field of zero at the center, which essentially moves the electrons, but they don't necessarily accelerate them. Also, uh, only one of four of the cavities accelerate the electron bunches at a time, and the other three cavities kind of coast the electrons. So this is a very important structure to know, to memorize, as well as its counterpart. So if you have any questions, please comment below. I'm not a physics master. That's about as deep into the physics as I know, but Karsmark, Khan, and I'm sure there are a couple other references if you really want to dive deeper into the physics of it, are there to offer help. But I think that is as deep as you probably really need to know for this exam, unless it just interests you. So if questions, comment below. Thank you for watching. Best of luck on your exam.